Settle in and I'll tell you the tale me own mother used to spin before the fire on cold nights. Ancient legend tells of a miracle so tantalizing that most choose to simply believe it impossible. Because if we start to hope, we may die striving for a fantasy. Some say a D&D &D campaign can be completed. That's right, a game can end on purpose and to everyone's satisfaction. But that's just a fairy tale used to pacify children. These things don't happen in the real world. Or do they? Okay, we can't talk about campaign epilogues without recognizing that many D&D campaigns never truly end. A huge number of campaigns fizzle out or are cut off for various reasons before they can reach the end of the story, which sucks. But if nothing stops it, a campaign will eventually reach a point where it's time to end the story. And for those parties lucky enough to reach that point, I think it's really important to end it right. An epilogue can help the entire group celebrate the game that you've committed so much time and energy to, especially for campaigns that have lasted for years, it's important to give the whole party a moment to experience and process the end of something that's been important to them. So how do you create an epilogue that does justice to your campaign? We are tackling all of that right here in this video. Just like in a novel or a play, an epilogue for a D&D game serves the function of bringing closure to the story and tying up any remaining loose ends. But while an epilogue in a piece of media is written by the author to conclude the story for the reader or viewer, a D&D campaign is collaborative, so the epilogue should be too. More than just ending the story, it can honor the time and creative energy that you all put into the game. It allows you all to write the last chapter of the story together. Now, ending a D&D campaign is a daunting undertaking, but we're we're not talking about how to draw all those threads together and conclude the plot and have a kick-ass final battle. Instead, we're talking about what happens after the big bad goes down, after the main plot of the campaign has been completed. What's next? The Dungeon Master's Guide has just three scant paragraphs on how to end a campaign, including this one. Make sure you allow space and time near the end of your campaign for the characters to finish up any personal goals. Their own stories need to end in a satisfying way, just as the campaign story does. Ideally, some of the characters' individual goals will be fulfilled by the ultimate goal of the final adventure. Give characters with unfinished goals a chance to finish them before the very end. This, in my opinion, is the role of the epilogue. To complete character goals and end both their stories and the story of the overall game in a satisfying way. An epilogue can cover what happens to the world after the events of the campaign and what happens to the characters. I was reading a blog post from Dungeon Solvers and the author suggested that a character epilogue is sort of like the mirror image of a character backstory. Other than the constraints of the campaign setting, the player is in control over what happens. It's one of the few parts of the story where the dice don't decide the outcome. I really like this because it sets up a neat pair of player-driven bookends for the story. An epilogue session can also include out-of-character meta discussion about the campaign. For many groups, this could be the first time that the players and DM can have a whole conversation about the game with no secrecy. What your campaign's epilogue will look like depends completely on what will serve you and your players. Some players might want to take their time writing their own character epilogues outside of the session, and then presenting them to the rest of the party, while others might prefer something a little more freeform. Some will want a long, emotional session where they can engage with NPCs, mourn their dead, and map out the future decades down the line, while others may prefer to leave things more open-ended and have more of a riding off into the sunset moment. In the next section, we'll discuss how to identify what kind of epilogue will work best for your party and how to make it happen. Microfilament phaser. Gamma capacitor propulsion anchor. Waystar. Waystar? Come on, Waystar? It's that full sci-fi conversion for 5e from Penny Dragon Games. It's got a core rule book, a setting book, a creature codex, an adventure book. How am I gonna fix the starboard thermagnetic drive plate without Waystar? It uses familiar fifth edition rules so players and DMs can jump right into a fast-paced, action-packed sci-fi game. Seriously, without this toolkit, we're warped. I suppose I could run the game with the core rule book alone since it has all the character creation tools, new classes and species, and rules for space combat, space travel, and cybernetics. But I'd sooner launch my auxiliary ion wave destabilizer out the airlock than give up the monsters, environments, and tactics in the creature codex. And what am I gonna do? 
Go without the Steal the Stars space heist adventure book? No way. Tell the captain we gotta turn the ship around. There's less than a week left to pledge on Kickstarter. Not only does every backer get a free PDF of the Lost to Boss Prison Break mini adventure, but backers in the Flight Admiral tier even get it in print. Plus, without Waystar, there is no way I'm getting the ventral solar wave capacitor to stop overheating whenever we divert power for a nanowave plasma frequency shift. I mean, that's just common sense. Okay, you're probably like, I get it. I know what an epilogue is. I know why it's important. That's why I clicked on this video. Are you gonna tell me how to do a kick-ass epilogue or not? And yes, yes I am. Before you get into anything else, there are a few decisions you and your party will need to make, starting with whether or not the epilogue should be its own session. There are arguments for both sides here, honestly. If you do the epilogue as part of your final session, starting right after the final confrontation or boss battle or whatever, you have the benefit of keeping everybody in the moment. Emotions are high as they celebrate their win or accept what happened, and you now have the opportunity to use the epilogue to guide the party into a meaningful conclusion. You can all process the end of your campaign pain right there at the table as it happens. This way, you aren't sending players home after the intense conclusion of an arc that took years to create, leaving them to sit with their feelings all alone for a week or more before everything gets wrapped up at the final session. Of course, there are benefits to having a separate session for the epilogue too. Some people will need a little time to think about how they want their character's story to conclude. They might need to review their notes to make sure they know what threads they want to pursue before the game is over for good. Plus, if you have a session dedicated to the epilogue, you can make a whole event out of it. Make it special with food and drinks, decorations, gifts for your fellow players. Those are all things to consider. Next, you'll want to identify what your epilogue is going to cover. There are all kinds of epilogues, from a cliffhanger that hints at future adventures to a conclusion that takes you to the player character's eventual deaths. Some of this is a question of what players want. Some will feel satisfied and settled if they know everything that happens in their character's life all the way to the end, but others might prefer to leave the possibility of unknown adventure or excitement past the events of the campaign. And of course, there are options in between, like describing what happened over the next year or five years, but leaving any time past that open to the imagination. Of course, I'm speaking from the assumption that players won their final battle. In the event that characters are dead, you can still give players the option to describe what happens with their family, their romantic partner, their organization, or some other relationship after their loss. This gives players a chance to share how their character will be remembered after they're gone. If your party would enjoy the hint of future adventures, that might mean that the DM sets up what's next, suggesting a plot hook for the characters even though the group won't be playing through it. In that case, players might not end up contributing that much to the epilogue, which brings me to the next question. What do the players control, and what does the DM control? In general, I would recommend that the DM has control over what happens in the world, and players have control over what happens with their characters, especially if your epilogue is going to outline the far future. Some people do like to roll dice to answer questions like how long a character lives after the campaign ends, whether or not they marry or have children, stuff like that. And if that's what your whole table wants, then you should do that. But in my opinion, the epilogue is like a reward for the party reaching the end of the campaign. And if you want my recommendation, I think players should get a little wish fulfillment here. I mean, if the campaign is over and these characters aren't coming back, there's no real downside to giving players free reign to describe how their character's life unfolds from this point. But of course, even if you do want to retain some control over what outcomes you think are realistic, you can still let the players provide the direction direction and then just help them refine it. Once you've answered all these questions, you are equipped to start planning what your epilogue will include. Between my own experiences as both a DM and a player, and a bunch of research into how other tables handle epilogues, I've broken down the contents into four main sections. First, final roleplay. While many epilogues do include some high-level summaries of events, there are also going to be some moments that players will probably want to roleplay out in real time. I think it's a good idea to give players some space for this, so they can point to the direction that they are personally interested in. This could just mean saying, you have a week to rest and recover after the final battle. What do each of you do during that week? This is also a great time to give the party a chance to enjoy whatever rewards they got at the end of the main plot arc. If they were granted a castle or an estate, for example, describe it and let them roleplay getting settled in. 
If they were given ruling positions, roleplay a coronation ceremony or something. They should have an opportunity to experience their success a little. Whether players prompt it or not, this is the time to do things like connect with important NPCs one last time, memorialize characters that have died, and tie up any plot or backstory related loose ends. DMs can initiate that sort of resolution by having NPCs show up at the character's door or send letters, or describing certain events related to unresolved plot lines. Second, I think it's key to give each player their own character spotlight. In D&D, no one character is the main character, but every character is the main character to their player. Everyone deserves to feel like their specific storyline mattered and had its own arc. This means spending some time focused on each player at the end of the game, dealing with whatever is most important to them. The good news is you don't have to guess about this. You can communicate with your players, either beforehand or even in the moment. Ask them what their goals are for their characters and what loose ends they would still like to see tied up. Just like the DMG says, if any character's personal plotline isn't resolved along with the main one, they should have a chance to resolve it. This could even mean having a few mini quests that take place after the main plotline is resolved. There are no rules about how long an epilogue should be. If your specific table needs a few sessions to draw everything to its conclusion, that's fine. Third, it's time to figure out what happens next. We already discussed how to settle on a time span to cover, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, you should talk with players to see if they would rather improvise this stuff on the spot or have time before the session to prepare their character's epilogue. No matter if we're talking about the near or distant future, the DM should describe what happens to the world as a result of the party's involvement. They've spent all this time making choices and taking action, and those things should have an impact on the direction of the game setting. This could be as brief as describing the aftermath of the final confrontation, or as long-term as sketching out how the arc of history changes as a result of the party's intervention. And finally, you might want to make some room for out-of-character discussion. Up until this point, in most games, the DM has necessarily kept some secrets from players. There are a lot of things going on in the background of the story that the DM is aware of, but that players can only guess at. And of course, every time players make a decision or an action fails or succeeds, the path of the story branches, and players might be curious about what lay down the other paths that they didn't take. This is your opportunity for the entire party to finally have a completely open meta conversation about the game. DMs can answer questions, resolve mysteries, and share some of the things that they weren't able to share before. And of course, the whole group can talk about what parts of the campaign they found particularly memorable or enjoyable. In some ways, you're memorializing the campaign, so it's nice to get a chance to reflect on it together. With every part of the epilogue, if you're not sure what will be best for your table, I would suggest just asking your players how they'd like to handle it. Even if you're not quite to the end of the campaign yet, there's no harm in getting some feedback now on how everybody wants to approach the epilogue when it does happen. If you're lucky enough to be in one of the D&D parties that actually reaches the true end of a campaign, you deserve to celebrate that. You and your party should get your happily ever after, or your tragic downfall, I don't know your game. While sometimes it's unavoidable life changes that lead to the dissolution of a game, a lot of games end because of conflict and poor communication. The good news is even that can be avoidable. If you want to make sure your party lasts long enough to get an epilogue, it's time to watch my video about how to deal with disagreements and friction in your group. Check it out right here.